August 1944, World War II. Off the coast of England, four Allied ships are destroyed. And the crew on board never saw it coming. The first signal we got something was wrong was when the explosion took place. Years later, the sea reveals a submarine with features unlike anything found before. It was completely unexpected, and it's a once-in-a-lifetime discovery. Through groundbreaking technology, detectives uncover a story of heroism and invention as they reveal the secrets behind the stealth submarine. In the English Channel, 180 feet beneath the surface lies a submarine. Two world wars have raged over these waters. Many vessels sunk in action. But no submarine was ever known to have been lost until now. An expedition of divers, maritime historians, and underwater surveyors set out to investigate the mysterious wreck. Diver Dan Stevenson and submarine historian Innes McCartney join the team. The, the submarine is located in a part of the English Channel where, according to official histories, there aren't supposed to be any U-boat wrecks. Diving in the English Channel is, is quite challenging. Um, we have very strong tides. We have very poor visibility under the water. I mean, two to three meters is, is the average, really. Special suits will enable them to reach the site. The strong tide could easily sweep them away. But the team takes a chance when the surge is less fierce. You are full of apprehension just as you leap off the boat. Innes is an expert on war wrecks and has identified over 40 submarines. He believes the mystery craft could be a World War II German U-boat. There's a process you can go through when you first dive a submarine to try and work out its nationality and its age. And uh, swimming down the port side, looking around the conning tower area, and very quickly going, oh yes, here's a late war Type 7 U-boat. Type 7 is the most common German U-boat. The submarine's length and technical features confirm the diver's suspicions. There's a sky periscope, and even, even in the end of it, there's still the mirror to refract the light so it can pan the skies for enemy aircraft brings it home to you when you, th when you think that the crew would have looked out through that. But this Type 7 U-boat is different. An unusual coating lines its entire surface. It appears smooth, but in some places, the pliable sheets are peeling off. A closer look reveals a distinct pattern of dimples, identifying the material as rubber. It confirms its identity. What surprised me uh, was the rubber coating, which I wasn't expecting to see. And uh, that clearly identified it as U-480 because U-480 was the only so-coated U-boat to enter the English Channel and not come out. In the summer of 1944, Allied armies arrive in France. 
Vast amounts of supplies are transported from England, creating heavy traffic within these shipping lanes. Then, in just five days, four ships explode and sink without warning. The submarine identified by Innes lies off this shipping passageway. Most Type 7 subs are painted, but U-480 is coated in rubber, possibly allowing it to remain unseen. Could U-480 be responsible for these sinkings? In October 1943, Captain Hans Joachim Furster sets out aboard U-480. The sub is equipped with several revolutionary upgrades. At age 23, Furster already has a reputation in the German Navy as an exceptional and aggressive commander. The U-480 is a lethal weapon in his hands. Helmsman and close friend Horst Rösner remembers Furster well. He was quick-witted, good to the crew, had a great sense of humor, but he paid attention to discipline. He didn't let you get away with anything. He was a great chap, a great chap. Furster hones his 47 men into a well-coordinated team through extensive training. Then, in August 1944, they set out on a mission to attack ships in the English Channel. Almost 200 feet overhead, Allied convoys travel across the Channel, resupplying the invasion army and producing a disharmony of underwater sounds. Submariners listen for lone targets, which are easier to identify and less protected. But the Allied ships are also on the lookout. They scan the horizon for U-boats and make full use of their sensitive sonar. On August 21st, Furster hears a single vessel, the Canadian warship Alberni. He checks his position and scans the sky for planes. When all's clear, he knows it's safe to remain near the surface. He positions himself behind the main periscope to begin his assault. Senior helmsman Horst Rösner follows his lead. Rösner is able to steer the ship from the secondary controls. Furster spots his quarry and launches the final stages of the attack. Whispered commands lessen the danger of the sensitive hydrophones on the ships above them. The crew adjusts their positions to balance the submarine, aiming both boat and torpedoes toward their target. They prepare to fire. No one aboard the Alberni suspects a thing. The 
Canadian ship Alberni rapidly sinks. Survivors recall the last moments aboard the doomed ship. It was uh, just about lunchtime, and then it called the, the uh, cooks to the galley, and they were serving the rum with the uh, officer of the watch and the coxswain right beside me. Actually, I was sitting at the end of the table. I got my grog, and I sat down, and I had one little swig of it, and then the explosion happened. Yeah, next thing you know, we're underwater. That happened that fast. And the very strange part of it, I didn't see anybody. There wasn't anybody coming out of the portholes or the, uh, the uh, mess deck. U-480's fatal attack was completely undetected. The question is, how? An expedition team closes in on the wreckage of a German wartime U-boat. They hope their dive unlocks the story behind the sinking of the Canadian ship Alberni in 1944. She vanishes in just 30 seconds. Uh, the ship just went right down, just like a shot. Very fast, so goodbye life jacket. Um, the bow was up in the air and uh stern was underneath the water and when I came up out of the water that's the position it was in and it slid, slid under the water. There was nothing there when I came up. Nothing. She just went down. Down. Fifty-nine of the ninety men on board die. Never saw anything, nobody, nothing on radar, nothing on, on uh, ASVIC. There's no indication at all there's a U-boat in, uh, in the area. The mystery of the sinking isn't solved until after the war. Furster records his actions in meticulous detail. And Lieutenant Commander Bell of the Alberni does the same. After the sinking, Bell gives his account of what happened. I have the honor to report that on the 21st of August, 1944, at 11.46, an underwater explosion occurred in the proximity of the engine room, which caused the Alberni to sink. Furster records the following on the same day. 11.43, after one minute and 19 seconds, the torpedo hit and detonated. By day, hardly a minute goes by without the din of depth charges exploding somewhere in the distance. One can only do any decent listening at night. Only one depth charge went off nearby. In the near. And that was it. We went slow ahead and bit by bit we made our escape. Langsam abgesetzt. Escapes completely undetected and without a scratch. <laughs>